Hello, everyone. I'm Luca Moranzoni. And I'm John Cowie. Welcome to this podcast on all things same day digital route to crown or crown to route to crown, I guess, isn't it? And it's uh, it's been a really interesting project for us, this. And I, I guess it comes from a little bit with our background, endo specialist. So, you know, what what's your background, Luca? So I started uh, my undergraduate in Cardiff. That's where I qualified. I am Italian. Uh, spent some time in France, undergraduate in Cardiff, and then did uh, several w- jobs in hospital, uh, restorative, pediatrics, and mainly maxillofacial work, and then did my full-time specialist training at Eastman in London. Uh, so I've been in specialist practice since 2014, and I've had uh, the privilege to work with you uh, since 2018 in the same practice. Yeah, so I've, I've been in that same practice a little bit longer, so uh, coming on to 14, 15 years now. But So my background is ever so slightly different, a little bit more general practice-based. Uh, so I spent probably the first six, seven years of my career in general practice, you know, that kind of restorative background, uh, then specialist training, and have been endo only since 2010. So that, that's a kind of sort of clinical background that we've got um, mm. there. We love teaching as well. Yeah. And one thing we are particularly um you know committed to is helping general dentists and 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 by that i mean you know employing some of the more modern techniques the modern workflows challenging also the way we work and and often i think for us when we're looking at a new workflow or something new that we're teaching we we always go quite deep don't we and explore it to start with absolutely we 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 love a workflow and um and since 2015 we've been running contemporary endodontics which is our the teaching branch of, of our clinical work so we've been uh teaching any general dentist uh, and it's really a, an emphasis on uh, clinical workflow because it's so important that's what the general dentist wants to go into the practice and and apply mm-hmm. uh, make sure it works make sure it's time efficient cost efficient and we we go deep into these things don't we you're absolutely right and i think that when we uh, we were introduced to digital workflow aspect of things and i think that that opened a huge remit for us um and i and i think we 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 really were taken with it because we we're curious about it and it also married all the philosophies about the endodontic aspects such as the technicalities of of conservative preparations maintaining tooth structure and all the modern technologies that come with the restorative aspect of things i mean we're self-proclaimed restorative endodontists aren't we at the end of the day yeah i mean that is definitely a it's been it is and has been and will continue to be i think a a very big focus uh for our work and i think whilst we're talking about kind of progression here and utilizing modern technologies uh, it's not a fad for us so this this comes out of you know hard data the evidence base uh that we have behind us and it's not new data either. So you've got some of the stuff, you know, if you look at the stuff from uh, Tamza and the group um, based in Tel Aviv, they were looking at stuff in the late 90s. And why do root fill teeth fail? Well, it, they fail because of restorative reasons and endo restorative and very few fail for pure endo reasons. Yeah. And then I also kind of um, circle back on, I'd, I'd like to bring a bit of context and uh, evidence here because I think it is important. Mm. Um I think about the Kishin paper, yeah, which is from the endodontic topics. And, and he talks about, yeah, the root canal is important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the coronal seal is important. But retaining as much dentine as possible yeah. is also quite critical. I think that's often forgotten. And uh, it helps being in, in a practice for a long time. And I think you've seen a lot of your work come back uh, and you get a gauge for what works and what doesn't work. And, and as you said, the, the evidence is out there to show us that a lot of the these teeth do fail because of the restorative aspect. And we often get just sucked into the endodontic technicalities. Um, and I think that, that what you mentioned, that Anil Kishan talking about the remaining dentine thickness, those perisovical uh, perisovical dentine aspect is incredibly important. And we often... We sort of bypass that a little bit mm. and we're almost coming back a little bit from the technicalities of the endodontic treatment which are important that are important but we need to focus on really what is left of the tooth and and how we can maintain that um and the advances in the endo world and the advances in the restorative world now allow us to do that uh, and i think that is what's fascinating for us because they now can be married together yeah, uh, and I think that's what we've tried to do, put them together. Absolutely. And it, it's um 
you know, two two endodontists that we've got a huge amount of respect for, George Bruder and Ove Peters, talk mm-hmm. about you know the tooth has got the crown has got to be restored to function, yeah. and this is where this um, kind of same day aspect starts coming in because we start to think about when do we put the indirect restoration on when do we cover the cusp when do we put the crown on when do we put the onlay on and you know if you sit a a group of dentists in a room you're going to get a ton of different answers i mean some of it will be based on you know what's going on with the endo underneath what's the prognosis how certain are you but what we do know particularly in the posterior region is that covering cusps reduces the risk of fracture and that can be up to a factor of six so it's pretty significant and what we also know uh if we look at the the, again evidence base from um the pratt paper in 2016 Mm. talks about if teeth have a a delayed period before that cuspal coverage is placed they're more likely to be extracted in a shorter period of time so Mm -hmm. Again and again, you know, every, everything we're highlighting here, and, and I appreciate there is a bit of a narrative that has to come with this, and it supports that cuspal coverage, it supports that earlier restoration, mm. and I think this is kind of where this workflow sits quite nicely for us, isn't it? Yes, and the, the advantage of the digital aspect is that it makes this digital, this workflow more achievable mm-hmm. and uh, more predictable, um, in, I mean, even in our hands, and we are endodontists, so we will have a slightly less experience to other restorative dentists out there, probably even less experience than some general dentists mm. out there. Um, so I, I think we're quite a good test of whether this yeah. this workflow is applicable. And we're very, very realistic in what we teach. We teach what's, what's achievable. We teach what's practical. Uh, we don't teach... Uh, using our practice as a comparison we we don't expect specialist work to be done by a general dentist we want people to be able to achieve these things take them away and as i said the the key messages for us are that cusper protection is key yeah in these posterior teeth especially the earlier the restoration on the tooth the more likely it is to have a a better long-term outcome but those are the key messages that result from these restorative aspects but what's also really important for us is this restorability aspect, restorability assessment. And this workflow ha- imposes this step. Okay, we, You have to strip the tooth and see what's left and, and make sure that this tooth is restorable. And I think the beauty of this digital workflow is that it flips everything upside down. Yeah, and it's, <clears throat> it's not a... It's not a new workflow. No. So we're, we're, we're not sat here talking about um, something that didn't exist previously. We um, didn't come up with it, unfortunately. No, and it was, <laughs> but we were inspired by something we listened to. Yes. And so we, we had the privilege of listening to uh, and watching one of the uh, lectures and presentations from Dental by Serona World. Yeah. And uh, there was an endodontist and a prosthodontist talking side by side. And it was really intriguing because, as Luca was saying there, it is sort of flip stuff right on its head mm. so we were we were kind of doing the dismantle the core build up the preparation and the digital scan sending that off to the to the lab in inverted commas which is mm-hmm. the prime mill and and the speed fire the furnace and then while that is milling in the background you're doing the endo and the time save that happens there is is remarkable actually but yeah. it in its simplicity, it sounds really simple, but mm-hmm. actually in reality, why don't, why don't we sort of take a step back and go through our sort of specific journey, starting from, okay, we recognize this workflow exists. Yes. How are we going to implement that into practice? Because yeah. we're a bit geeky, aren't we? Yeah. Well, how, how, how did we implement it into our clinical day-to-day? That's, I think we, we, we just go through start to finish. And I think um, for us, the digital workflow starts with the uh, convene CT scanning. Mm-hmm. So CBCT. Um, so it, that for us, especially in endodontics, we're big advocates of it because it adds a huge dimension in terms of picturing what the problem is, picturing what the disease is, picturing what the bone aspect of the anatomy of the tooth. Um, you can also plan your access cavity, maintain more of that compromised tooth structure. So for, for us nowadays, a CBCT, within the practice is almost mandatory to achieve a certain level of, of uh, clinical dentistry. 
were very realistic. It's you know the price is still high, and there is also a space um, issue. But for us, that is the way that it's going. Mm-hmm. Uh, so for us, the first door <laughs> to open is uh, the cone beam. And that is for diagnosis and prognosis to an extent, because it allows us to understand whether the tooth should even be dismantled, because we might detect uh, patterns of bone loss that uh, are related to a crack or uh, periapical infections that are just far too extensive to treat. Uh, so for us, the start of that digital process is in the cone beam CT. And then it comes to the diagnosis and the restorability assessment. And I think restorability assessment is what we go on and on and on about quite a lot in our, <laughs> on our courses. Yeah, it is. And I, and I think with the this particular workflow, you know, we are potentially even a, a consultation. We talk specifically now about the prime scan, so the yes. digital impressions mm-hmm. and and where that fits in this workflow for us. So the patient would come in for their consultation. Yes. We would examine, as you're saying there, we'd get the cone beam, mm-hmm. the first stages of our, our workflow. The diagnose. Digital, diagnose. Fantastic. Then we would also at the consultation appointment, and we never started off with this in mind, actually, we, we would scan the patient. Mm-hmm. So we'd take a digital impression. Yeah. And it's amazing, actually, that ability for a patient to see a 3D representation of their mouth, their tooth, their problem uh, is such a useful and powerful communication tool that you get them on board. They start to understand a lot of what we're talking about, which is these teeth are more prone to fracture. This is why we need to, you know, look yes. at how much filling is there is here. Look at the little crack that's here. It's that it's that powerful engagement. I love that yeah. actually bringing yeah. that in. It's really engaging, really, really powerful. And I think once we we've, we've got that information, <clears throat> excuse me. Once we've got the information, you also have the, the, the standard photographs. Standard photographs yeah. are very, very useful, not only to convey a message, but for records and, and for, for learning, for yeah. learning from what you're doing. Uh, so we've, we've, got, we've gathered all this information. And then I think that that's our first appointment, the, the consultation appointment. Um, the treatment appointment, you know, this is where we combined everything to happen in one appointment. So with this workflow, we've, we've managed to have a consultation appointment where we plan, uh, as, as John, you said very nicely, we diagnose, we take a combi and we take the intraoral scans, we take the photographs and we get the patient on board with the treatment. Um, but the second appointment, the treatment, that will be the crown to root crown yeah. <laughs> appointment. Um, and let, let's go through the stages because I think that's that's really it, it, it was valuable for us to to break down all the steps because I think that's what is very important is to break down the whole process and analyze all the all the bits because that is what makes a difference and the first bit is what we you heard us talk about already is is the restorability assessment you know stripping everything off the tooth and seeing what is left and I think we're left with that that's that's a starting point for us yeah and then you've got you've essentially got that as we describe it the tooth naked so you can see what's going on we then will actually at that stage if we've located the root canals we'll we'll block them off with something like a ptfe tape so that we we can come back to them it's easy to remove that you're Mm -hmm. not going to have the difficulties of re-navigating your way Mm -hmm. back into the canal openings we then in the usual fashion will etch bond place our composite so we place our core build up and there's some benefit in doing that yeah, at the there, beginning, isn't there? There is. And I, and I think very simply, it's you haven't had hypo yeah. bathing over the tooth, hypochlorite bathing over yeah. the tooth and, and the dentine and the collagen mm-hmm. effect that that may have or may not have. I mean, we don't know for sure, but yeah. if you can have a marginal gain, why wouldn't you have a marginal yeah. gain? We're not going to, we're not going to be compromised anything by etching and bonding mm-hmm. earlier than later on. So I think that's important. So we, that that's the flip of, of this treatment is that you dismantle everything you block the, the middle of the tooth where the canals would be, and then you start your etch and bond, and, and you build you, you build your core yeah. effectively. You build your core. Uh, we use composite in this case. We build your core, and we prepare this core and the tooth, the remaining tooth, for whichever restoration we plan to place, whether it's an onlay, whether it's a crown. Yeah. So that's that is the first step: is dismantle, etch bond, core prep, and I think that that's slightly unusual for an endodontist to do because we uh, and for a a practitioner who's focusing on endodontics because what they what we normally do is 
we try and get into the canal system as soon as possible you know, get those files spinning as quickly as possible and that's what we get excited about or well, at least that's what i look forward to um and in this case we just have to hold back and prepare this core and there's several benefits not just the bonding aspect of it but i think also the fact that you are preparing that tooth and establishing a strong core you're also helping your isolation because you're secure that you're working through nice four nice solid walls of the tooth. So you're less likely mm. to have leakage or seepage of saliva. So I think that's, that's a win-win almost at the beginning. You're also fresher to do that sometimes harder restorative aspect yeah. of the tooth compared to at the end of the appointment where you have tied after the endodontic treatment. So that's the first step that's been taken from the end of the appointment to the beginning, the restorative buildup and preparation. Yeah. And then from there, <clears throat> excuse me, we, we do the digital impression, mm. so we scan. So we scan the tooth, we scan the opposing arch, or, or if we've done that already at the consultation appointment, we can splice mm -hmm. one to the other. Yeah, and we're fortunate with the Prime Scan that it's just, it's a phenomenal kit. And there, yeah. there are, <clears throat> all, I mean, all the machines out there are incredibly impressive, but for us who were newbies into the world of intraoral scanning, the Prime Scan was just walking into a Rolls Royce type of a machine to learn and the power of it was was really enjoyable yeah um so the, the advantage of of it for us was that the scanning was easy detailed and also the software to design the, the, the restoration was endodontic proof basically endodontist proof yeah and, and i think that was exactly what i was going to say actually is that it's that so you've you've prepped you've scanned you've got design mm. and it's such an intuitive piece of software, the Serex software, that the, the, design, the, the design suggestions are you know, invariably there and thereabouts, to be honest. You need to do some minor tweaks here and there. And then everything flows as well. Mm. So it's, it's the impression to the design, and then it sends it to the mill, and then it sends it to the furnace, and it's automated. And the process, as you say, is, um, is very straightforward. And I think yeah. when, you're, when you're inputting a new workflow you are inputting variables mm. and you're putting yourself out of your comfort zone. So if, if each of those variables that you're adding in can be less stressful, yeah. then I think for me, it's a, it's a really kind of obvious yeah. and, and simple process to go through. Yeah. If we can make it easy for yourself, do so. Um, especially if you're implementing new techniques, there's yeah. no two ways about it. No matter how much planning you are, uh, you're putting into before the start, it will be um, it will be stressful on the day, um, yes. And it all communicates. And I think after the scanning, uh, we choose the restoration, and then it gets sent off to the prime mill. Uh, in our case, upstairs, and that gives. I mean, the prime mill takes what fifteen minutes, yeah. depending on the restoration. Yeah. Now, if you can do a molar render in fifteen minutes, <laughs> there you go. That's your time frame. Or you can take a little bit longer. <laughs> That's absolutely fine. Um, so in this case, we would send the, the restoration while it's milling upstairs. We re-access in the middle of the composite core. We find a PTFE tape that was blocking the canals. And we start our endodontic treatment, treatment per se. Um, and once that is completed, we can go and check the restoration uh, that's been milled. Now, this is where there are nuances depending on the practice and depending on who can help you, depending on who you can train, because we enjoyed the process and we took the restoration out from the prime mill. We checked it, we stained it, we put it in the speed fire uh, and um, to, in the furnace. So that takes another 15, 20 minutes to stain and... Yeah. Glaze. I mean, you could certainly you could you could speed up that part exactly just by using a, a very simple universal glaze where you're not necessarily putting all of that character into the restoration. And some patients are are worried about having character. Some patients don't want character. So you, but what what you've got is opportunity to explore both avenues yeah. that, as you feel you want as a clinician. Um, but with whatever you are aiming for, the fit is still good, mm -hmm. and and I think that's really critical for us. And the fit is at, at that appointment. Yeah. So you you can change those timings as described, but once that it's coming up, it's come out of the furnace. You take it to the patient's uh, tooth, and you cement it. You follow the bonding protocols that you have in place for whichever material you're using, and it's there and it's done and it's protected. 
And I think that's, that's an incredibly powerful thing to be able to let the patient go away with something that is custom made for them, fitting well and strong to protect what you've just done. Um, it's for both parties, whether you're clinician or patient, it's, it's a hugely, hugely powerful thing to have. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And I think, you know, if I was to ask you the question, how did your patients find that experience? You know, I, my first reply, I'll ask you in a sec, but my mm. first, well, they were all impressed yeah. with it. There's that mm. kind of sort of wow factor of what you can do this all in one go. Yeah. And, and, and the fact that it's, it conveys that message even further that it's custom made for them and it's at that time and it's checked throughout and you also have you also retain the, the clinician whether you like this or not the clinician retains control of a start to finish mm. to, of the procedure um <clears throat> so you can, not only gives you a, a bit of that satisfaction because you are looking at the the whole treatment start to finish but it, it gives you that bit of control and quality assurance as you do the whole thing um and that's why i emphasize it's the patient the patient's experience is fantastic because it reduces their time in the chair overall they get a hugely powerful message that it's done and protected at the same time but from a clinician point of view we need some some work enjoyment and some pleasure from these things and i think the fact that you can do the start to finish of the treatment you can mill it within your practice that you can cement it at the same time and and see that the patient is wowed by it i think that's that's a lovely it's quite a nice feeling to have yeah, and, and I think you know, it's something that's often not talked about is the economic benefit that this sort of mm. workflow can bring to a, to a practice. And uh, Luca and I are um, with with three others. We're with one of the three. We're two of five partners in the dental practice and um, at Circus Dental, and and we understand you know that that businesses have to operate at an, an element of profit because yeah. otherwise they wouldn't exist. And and this workflow allows you to be incredibly efficient um in that in that regard and and i think it's something that when you're investing quite heavily into technology like this there is a there is an upfront cost mm -hmm. an ongoing cost and you have to look at it and go yeah the enjoyment is one aspect of it for yeah. sure yeah but there has to be a return on the investment that's there and i think this workflow certainly will will allow that for sure yeah um, i think so interestingly though you know we, we're talking about this and i think we need to be quite clear because we're, we're off the endodontist and we're talking about this workflow mm -hmm. This for me uh, is very much a workflow for for the general practitioner. Yeah. I love the fact that um, we, you know, we're specialists and we're just pushing the boundaries of this, but we advocate this for the general practitioner, and and I think we're in an incredibly privileged position to be able to to push the boundaries of of these clinical workflows and the technology and try it, and then uh, and and get these. Uh, protocols in place but certainly we we're very very keen for these protocols to be uh, applied and carried out by as many dentists as possible and that's why we really believe that th this digital workflow is for the general practice is for the general dentist uh, um, absolutely and if your practice is moving with the times and with technology um, if you get just the smallest taste of this is there is no stopping um, so we really, really um, would advocate this workflow to be looked into by the general practice, the general dentist, uh, whether you're just doing endo or not doing endo at all. Um, it certainly is something that applies into, into those practices. They, they have, you know, it, it's a learning curve. And I think mm. we've had, I mean, what would you say the, what would, you, what would be the biggest challenges we've encountered in the last well, it's eight months. It's a challenge to my routine. I'm a man <laughs> of routine. I like I like things to be a certain way. And suddenly I'm saying, I'm going to flip everything on its head, yeah. and we're going to we're going to change it up. And mm. um, you know that requires us to go and do certain things. So we are endodontists primarily, but yeah. I'm sure we've worked a bit in general practice as well. But there has to be that. Let's go and refresh how we do an on-lay preparation let's okay. go and refresh how we do a crown preparation mm. we need to go and refresh how we bond a lithium disilicate onlay um which <laughs> which will probably be bread and, bread and butter to most yes. um most dentists but for us we've been at that loop for a little bit of time so yeah. it's been it's been really lovely to get back into that and kind of delve into that uh, i think that was a big challenge 
the other challenge um, was just learning the software and the design. And yeah. you know, we're we were really fortunate to be supported um, by Densply really nicely for this. And mm. I think that would be such a word of advice. If you're going to invest in this technology, you've got to ask and use the support. Ask for there. help. Ask, ask, ask Densply to be there for the first five cases. Yeah. Um, we, you know, we had as much help as possible um, and not because we're special, um, just because we asked and we asked again um use have someone to help you through the design of the software with your first three to five uh, restorations and they've been uh, ryan and everybody that that came in to help us uh, have been incredibly incredibly helpful and the things we learned on the on the job uh, were fantastic so uh, there is that learning curve of the software with anything with anything but uh, i don't think anyone would ever regret that um absolutely what what you mentioned uh, as challenges or difficulties, you know, the routine, the design, the preps. And I think I love that those are the challenges because actually those are the aspects that we should all go and improve on. So in a way, the, this digital workflow is, also, is almost telling us, actually, do things properly. <laughs> and I will tell you which way to do it, such as restorability assessment, bonding, designing then the end and then the cementation the center so it's it's forcing you into the best possible dentistry yeah <laughs> and you, you also you also get to see your preps in a huge <laughs> amount of detail on a screen digitally so it's, not everybody it, wants to do that <laughs> but it's real-time feedback <laughs> yes. on, on your work and and i think that's really nice to see the the other thing you know in terms of onboarding something like this and we were we were pretty good with this i think we we understand that bringing a new workflow will take time. Mm. So those first appointments that we did with this workflow were whole morning blo blocked off yeah. or a whole afternoon blocked off. So your mind is free of the stress of a patient before and after. Yeah. You focus entirely mm. down on the workflow. And the other thing, just reflecting back onto my first case, mm. you know, you see the, the chefs at MasterChef that have their kind of pages and pages of mm. notes of what they're going to do and at what time they're going to do it. I literally wrote down the whole workflow, one after the other, one after it went through it, sat down with my nurse, and we yeah. both understood, you know, where we are, what's expected of who, who's going out the room when, what we're doing when. And I think that time to plan and giving yourself that space to execute is really important. Yes. Visualizing the whole process. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's that's key. Um, and and this the, the, this workflow brings in all the modern materials that are now available. Or the modern bonding techniques that are now available that will improve the longevity of the tooth. So we hope, but I think it's it's it sits very well with us and our philosophy because it marries very well with our endodontic philosophy as well of dentin preservation. Uh, so it's a restoratively driven endodontics where the endodontic treatment is dictated by the restorative aspect of the tooth, mm -hmm. um, whether it's access cavity design so caries driven restorative driven access cavity design and also the files that we use nowadays again it's all focused on denting preservation it's all these small little puzzle pieces coming together and and this digital workflow just marries them keep holds them together like a nice giant hug keeps everything together and and puts it together so that we can um give the tooth the best possible chance really i think we are in a in a phase in dentistry where we are really um, really able to offer some good options long term yeah and i think that just picking up on that that comment about dentine preservation there and maybe bringing onlay into that conversation so traditional crown preps obviously remove a bit more structure onlays tend to be that little bit more uh conservative and preserving in, in that perisphical area. So you're maintaining the thickness at the base of the cusp. We know again from the evidence we've talked about earlier that that is gonna lead to an improved outcome, but you've covered the cusp, the rigidity is back into the tooth. Mm. Um, if I think back to why I didn't do a lot of onlays, <laughs> so one was one was training. Yes. Because I qualified a little bit earlier than you, Luke, I'm a bit, many, old, a bit older than ago. you. Um, but also, when we speak to general, why don't you do a lot of onlays? That's because the temporary always comes off. It's mm. really difficult to temporize. So I'm going to go for a crown because my temporary will stay on. 
patient's not going to come back. These are these are important things to think about because yes. the way your patient perceives that is quite important. If a patient keeps having a temporary come off and they've got to come out from work and come back and you put another one on and that happens two or three times before fit, mm. it's a pain for everyone. But the same day workflow, I think it it almost makes you look at the onlay as the better option. And it is the better option a lot of the time. Yeah, I, I think it forces you in better dentistry. And I think as a, as a slightly side note to the digital workflow that we talked about, and we, we were very fortunate that we were doing all this testing, if you want, with digital workflow and, and scanning over the summer, because over the summer, we were presented with several trauma patients. Mm. And I will be honest, if we didn't have the digital workflow set up, we would have really had to compromise on some of these uh, really young patients that had trauma. Uh, so when, when we talk about the applicability of this technology, the applicability of this workflow and who benefits from it and when it can be used, we're here talking about endodontic treatment and restorative treatment same day. Absolutely, that is a fantastic game changer. But from a trauma perspective, that is going to be uh, addressed by general practitioners the ability for us to scan young patients rather than taking impressions after trauma is hugely beneficial. Well, yeah, and I, I remember the case you were thinking about because we were, the other thing about this is when you've got the scan, yeah. so you've got the cone beam, you've got the digital impression. I remember it was, you know, myself, you, and our prosthodontist, Colin, all stood together in a room. Yeah. And one of our general dentists, Dan, yeah. as well, we were all stood together around a computer screen looking at all the images, talking about the case. And I think... Yeah. You, you get far more context when you've got that 3d mm. imaging and then you can uh, and then you can plan uh, properly mm. and design 3d models splints uh you can rebuild teeth up digitally and then you can do direct composite buildups for destraumatized teeth i mean it was really really um beneficial and uh, we were very very fortunate that we had the, the machines that we had at the time um the fact that they all communicated with each other seamlessly made the whole process a lot less stressful especially when you have someone that has been at the, at the end of a trauma um, so that I thought that was um, something that's worth mentioning because it's not mentioned as much it's maybe not as appealing to talk about trauma uh, but from a patient perspective and, and the patients that walked away with something mm. uh, they, they just could not believe it they just could not believe it um, and that is going to make them big big difference in their long term because they need to hold on to these teeth for a lot longer yeah so i think you know the for the general dentist we see the on lay benefit yes for maybe at specialist level or dealing with trauma more aptly we mm. see the benefit there i think one benefit that came out of this process that neither of us expected was actually there's a as an educator as uh, someone that you know kind of talks and tries to explain things to other dentists there's such a powerful education aspect to it and i yeah. think you know, endodontists or restorative dentists that are involved in conversations around assessing root filled teeth, options for restoration, the ability to utilize the prime scan and the digital impressions to showcase these teeth in three dimensions moving yeah. is really powerful. And, and, and again, I come, come back to, I, I remember the, the first time you did this, it's annoying that you did this first <laughs> and not me, but yeah. um, so you'd scanned pre-op and then you'd scanned after the restoration was removed yes and it was that kind of ability to layer one on top of the other mm. remove the restoration and, and suddenly you go okay wow that's you know the impact and then you can access these teeth and then you can scan and you can show the impact mm. of that as well and uh, there's so it's so much easier to it's, see it than and, talk about and it. from a general practice point of view the the patient was so taken aback by what was left of the tooth that they went well that's you know clearly i need a crown on that or something to protect it I mean, I didn't even have to explain, well, you have thin walls or anything like that. Uh, so that that was very, very interesting, really interesting. Uh, hopefully, hopefully we, we, we come across as being excited about this <laughs> digital uh, workflow aspect of things. It is. It's a lovely workflow. And, and I think conceptually is completely sound. And if you tie in the evidence base, there yeah. is reason. You know, there always has to be a why you do things. And mm. You can't just be for a fad because the technology exists. It, it's going to improve patient outcome, yep. clinician enjoyment, 
um, and as a as a practice, it's much more efficient workflow. Yeah. So it's it's got multiple mm. multiple benefits across the across the board. But I think you've got to be you've got to be prepared to commit the time yeah. to developing that workflow, haven't you? Yes, you have to you to commit to this learning curve. Absolutely, and you have to commit to doing several cases that are not going to be great. Yeah. Because there is no substitute to the to numbers and repetition and experience, absolutely. Um, but the learning curve is rapid, it's quick. Um, but there is no no two ways about it. You will have to go through slower appointments, and some won't work. Um, but in the medium term, it, I'm not going to even say long term. In the medium term, you'll see the benefits straight away. Yeah, it's been um, as we just sort of wrap up here. I think it's been a it's been a really fun journey. Mm. Um, you know, we're we're real big advocates of embracing the sort of change and, and the challenge that comes with it, uh, particularly you know when it can enhance patient outcomes. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for your time. Yeah, thank you.